In this video, we'll talk about Enterococcus. To be clear, Enterococcus refers to two specific bacteria. Those are Enterococcus facium and Enterococcus faecalis. You're probably sick and tired of seeing this flow diagram, but the more times I go over it, the more it will stick in your brain. We've been talking about gram-positive cocci, and we can split those cocci into catalase-negative strep or catalase-positive staph. We've been going down the catalase-negative pathway, as you see in that fuzzy orange line. If we further zoom in on catalase-negative strep, which are all gram-positive cocci, we further subdivide them based on their pattern of hemolysis. We've already talked about the alpha hemolytic and beta hemolytic part of this flow diagram, and starting with this video, we'll now begin to talk about gamma hemolytic species. Just like with alpha and beta hemolysis, gamma hemolysis can further be subdivided to help you figure out what type of bacteria we're talking about, depending on whether or not the pathogen grows in 6.5% NaCl. So whether or not it grows in salt will further tell us whether it's one of two different umbrella categories. If it does grow in 6.5% NaCl, then it's enterococcus, and that's what we'll talk about in today's video. If it does not grow in 6.5% NaCl, then it's non-enterococcus, and that will be the next video after this one. Now, you can probably appreciate this by looking at this slide, but this is actually really easy to remember. Non-enterococcus does not grow in salt. Enterococcus does. So the one with non in the name does not or does non grow in 6.5% salt. So that's pretty easy to remember. In this video, like I said, we'll be talking about enterococcus. So we're talking about enterococcus facium and enterococcus faecalis. These are gram-positive, catalase-negative, gamma hemolytic species that grow in 6.5% salt, which is very important, as you just saw on the previous slide, to differentiate enterococcus from non-enterococcus, which does non-grow in salt. Just keep saying that out loud. You'll finally get it to stick. These are PYR positive, and these are Lansfield Group D pathogens. The description of what these look like are diplococci in a chain-like arrangement. And if you see that buzzword, that's usually going to make you start to think about enterococcus, and I'll show you a picture of that on the next slide. These pathogens are found natively in the GI tract, hence the name feces and faecalis. It should make you think of feces or poop. So this is found in the GI tract. These are facultative anaerobes. The thing I want you to focus on from this slide are two parts. One, that enterococcal species grow in the 6.5% salt. And again, just to really hammer this into your brain, that is very important to differentiate this against the non-enterococcus. And lastly, the description, diplococci in a chain-like arrangement, which looks like this. So if you see these images, you want to start to think perhaps enterococcus. Now let's talk about virulence factors. The first one, which is not as important to memorize, is that enterococcal species have intrinsic resistance to penicillin G and cephalosporins. And for this reason, we can't, obviously, we can't treat with penicillin G or cephalosporins if we know for certain that the infection is caused by either enterococcus feceum or enterococcus faecalis. The very high yield thing to know, and what the majority of today's video will focus on, is what's known as the VAN gene. The VAN gene is a gene that gets acquired by this bacteria, which leads the bacteria to be vancomycin resistant. And this is really a big deal in microbiology. So you may have seen the term get thrown around vancomycin resistant enterococci, or VRE. And VRE is basically the modern day MRSA. MRSA used to be a huge deal in the past because it was methicillin resistant. And anytime bacteria acquires resistance to one of our heavy hitters, so to speak, of antibiotics, it's really a big deal in the realm of microbiology. And now we have this enterococcal species, which I'll explain the pathophysiology in just a second, but which acquires this van gene, and then that renders it vancomycin resistant. So vancomycin resistant enterococci, or VRE, is a major high yield topic for the purposes of exams, and I'm going to talk about that now. So let's shift gears and we'll talk both about the virulence factors, pathophysiology, and the clinical syndrome that vancomycin-resistant enterococcus can cause. So recall that if you have vancomycin, right, this is the chemical portion of your antibiotic, usually vancomycin will go 
and bind to the D-ala, D-ala portion of the peptidoglycan. I'm very much oversimplifying this, but I want you to understand how this works. So think of peptidoglycan as being these random strands, which I'm depicting here as red and green. Usually, that peptidoglycan will crosslink, and when it crosslinks, as you see in that now crossed red and green peptidoglycan, that shores up the bacterial cell wall and makes the bacterial cell wall somewhat sturdy and impenetrable, which is good for the bacteria and bad for the human body. Vancomycin inhibits this process by normally binding to the d ala d ala portion of the peptidoglycan and therefore prevents the cross-linking so that the bacterial cell wall never gains that structural integrity. So to be clear, that's how vancomycin normally works. But in the case of VRE, or vancomycin-resistant enterococcus, what happens is that the bacteria acquires this thing called a VAN gene, VAN obviously being named for vancomycin. And this VAN gene alters d ala d ala into d ala d lactate So you can see there that there's that change in the terminal portion of d ala d ala and now we have d ala d lactate And once we change d ala d ala into d ala d lactate vancomycin can no longer bind to the portion of the peptidoglycan and can therefore no longer prevent peptidoglycan from crosslinking and ensuring stability in the bacterial cell wall. And so an enterococcal species that's vancomycin resistant due to the van gene changing d ala d ala to d ala d lactate can go on crosslink peptidoglycan and ignore the effects of vancomycin. Now, like I said before, this is a major issue because in the realm of microbiology and in the realm of using antibiotics to target special pathogens, something that's immune to vancomycin, which is one of the heavy hitter antibiotics that we have, can cause a lot of dangerous infections. So it's for this reason that vancomycin-resistant enterococcus causes very significant nosocomial infections. So those are infections that are acquired after about 48 hours in the hospital inpatient setting. This can also cause subacute bacterial endocarditis, it can cause urinary tract infections, and it causes a lot of biliary infections. And the one that you want to look out for on your exam is cholecystitis. So this is really, really high yield for exams because again, this species is resistant to vancomycin, which typically has broad coverage. So the way that you want to think about this, and the way that I think you should memorize this in terms of using a mnemonic, is that nosocomial infections are very serious. Very, V-R-E, for vancomycin-resistant enterococcus. And this is very high yield for exams because if they give you a patient that's in the inpatient setting, in the hospital, or gets admitted to the hospital for some seemingly random reason, like a planned surgery or something along those lines, but then develops an infection after admission, you need to think nosocomial infection, and you need to connect that mentally with VRE. So just memorize nosocomial infections are very serious, very VRE for vancomycin-resistant enterococcus. Now I have another mnemonic. If we go back to the pathophysiology, you need a way to remember what the van gene does. And so I always think about enter the van. So I imagine this van with its door open, enter for enterococcus, the van for van gene. So this helps you remember that the van gene is the way or the pathophysiology by which the virulence of VRE is conferred. So two mnemonics here, one enter the van, the other, nosocomial infections are very serious. And that helps you remember that all of this information relates to enterococcus. Now, briefly for treatment, if it's VRE, because it's vancomycin resistant, obviously we can no longer use vancomycin. So the treatment here will be either linazolid or daptomycin. If it's non-VRE, so it's just the enterococcal species that are not vancomycin resistant, then you either use ampicillin or if they're allergic to penicillins, then you can use vancomycin because again, it's not vancomycin resistant. So here's your summary slide. Again, appearance, we're thinking of diplococci in chain-like arrangements. The characteristics, you should know that it's gram-positive, catalase negative, gamma hemolytic, group D, and that it does grow in 6.5% salt, which differentiates it against the non-enterococcus because non-enterococcal does non-grow in salt and that this is PYR positive. I will point out for completeness sake that technically this species is gamma hemolytic and alpha hemolytic, so you might see it written as 
a variable pattern of hemolysis, but in order to keep this straight in your brain, I do suggest that you just think of it as a gamma hemolytic species. For virulence factors, remember we talked about that intrinsic resistance to penicillin G and cephalosporins. The more important thing to know about this pathogen is that when you acquire a van gene or when enterococcus acquires a van gene, it confers vancomycin resistance. And we call that vancomycin resistant enterococcus or VRE, which is a major cause of nosocomial infections. Lastly, for treatment, linazolid or daptomycin if it's VRE, since obviously we can't use vancomycin. And if it's non-VRE, if it's just the regular enterococcal species that doesn't have that van gene, then we use either ampicillin or if they're allergic to ampicillin, we use vancomycin.